Today, January 4th, 2007, when Keith Ellison takes his individual ceremonial oath of office, it will be done with his right hand on a copy of Thomas Jefferson's Holy Quran. Emerson, Ellison, the first Muslim elected to Congress, requested to take the oath of Thomas Jefferson's personal copy of George Sale's 1734 translation of the Quran, commonly called the El Quran of Muhammad, published in London in 1764. This act of, Je of, Everest, uh, of Ellison does not come without controversy. Representative Virgil Gould, a Republican from my home state of Virginia, and other uh, so-called conservative media talking heads thought the act of Ellison to be un-American. Naturally, disagreement is in contradiction to the Quran itself, the founding fathers of this country, and the U.S. Constitution, all of which guarantees religious freedom for all Americans. Tonight, we have with us author and educator Dr. Abdul Karim Bengora from American University to discuss the qualities of the Holy Quran. To get started, however, we will look at a brief interview by Dr. Ahmadadeen Ahmed. We'll be back in two minutes. Rahim, in the name of God, the merciful, the gracious, allow me to begin with the traditional Islamic greeting, Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. The subject being the relationship between Islam and liberty and an emphasis being put on the role that rule of law plays in that linkage between uh, between them. Now when I give lectures on an introduction to Islam, I always emphasize at some point in the lecture that if you don't remember anything else I say, remember this, that in Islam the individual is directly responsible to the Creator. This is really the heart of the fundamental teaching of Islam, which is Tawheed or unity. Uh, Islam is an Abrahamic faith and shares many things in common with Christianity and Judaism, including monotheism, but Islam is absolutely uncompromising in that monotheism. Not only is there only one God, but that one God is totally unified. There's no trinity of personhood in God. Uh, God's creation is unified. There is no chosen people. All individual humans will be judged based on their actions and their beliefs. Now, the, that's the core principle of Islam. The core principle of liberty is, as I like to put it, what I call the non-aggression principle, that no person or group has the right to initiate force or fraud against others to seek to attain their values. Islam is a complete way of life. Liberty is a political principle. It's a, an ethical constraint that is based on the premise really that, as Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson put it, that mankind collectively has only the same rights that they have individually. The rights and powers of government are those that are delegated to the government by the people, but you can't delegate a right you don't have. Individuals have no right to murder, and therefore they cannot delegate to the government the right to murder. Individuals have no right to steal, and therefore they cannot delegate to the government a right to steal, and so on. <coughs> Now, when you look at these ideas from this perspective, it should be clear that they are thoroughly compatible. Uh, if the human being is directly responsible to the Almighty, then no human being can have any authority over another human being except to the degree that he may be legitimately enforcing the divine law. And if... Welcome to the Scholar's Chair, Professor Bengora. It's good to have you here. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure uh, to be here. Thank you. Dr. Bengora, this is the Holy Quran. Yes. This, we, we both are Muslims, and, and it's great to have you here to give us further knowledge of this great, great document. So let me read for you one ayah that, that has been a very, it's a very famous ayah, and uh, I want to get your impression on it. Um, it says here, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, let there be no compulsion in religion. Truth stands out clear from error. Whoever rejects evil and believes in Allah has grasped the most trustworthy handhold that never breaks. And Allah hears and knows all things. This reads more like ethical law. What is the Quran? 
Well, the Quran is the final testament, the final revelation from Allah, mm -hmm. who we translate in English as God, yes. uh, to humankind as the last installment mm -hmm. for us to follow the right path. Mm -hmm. As earlier revelations were either recorded very late, mm -hmm. therefore we find some inconsistencies and uh, some misinterpretations. And the Quran become now the final revelation mm -hmm. to make amends for some of those inconsistencies and some of the shortcomings that humankind mm -hmm. had uh, misinterpreted some aspects of the word of God. Mm -hmm. uh, it is just a continuation of the book itself, which we trace from the Torah, uh, the Angel, that is the New Testament, mm -hmm. all the way to the Quran. Mm -hmm. Fortunately for me, I attended the Roman Catholic school, so uh -huh. I was an altar boy. So I was privileged to be a master student of the Bible, having won many, many awards when I was a youth. And then after my father was assassinated for political reasons, I ended up in Italy and studied under some of the great rabbis in Italy. So I was uh, privileged in so many ways to be able to be exposed to the Torah. Mm. And growing up a Muslim, I'm able to read uh, all three of these uh, testaments, uh, these revelations, which I see no contradictions between the three. And in fact, we see in your background that you have three PhDs and you have several masters mm -hmm. from, 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 from major universities. I was just noticing also mm -hmm. that you have written, how many titles, how many books? Uh, 53 to date. 50, 53 to date. Right. And you have written the Quran and the uh, contemporary issues is one title. One is on the uh, Fatiha. I don't know how you get that many pages out of seven <laughs> verses, you know. Well, this is the wonderful thing about the Surah al fatiha yeah. and what the discovery mm -hmm. is the connections between all three Abrahamic faiths. Mm -hmm. Because Surah al fatiha of course, is the opening, the beginning. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if we go back to Hebrew, ancient Hebrew, al pathwa means the opening. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's uh, Judaic connections. Mm -hmm. But what is also amazing, the seven uh, paragraphs or, or sentences, if you want to call them that, sure. in the Surah al fatiha pretty much represent the seven thunders in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. But because we have not been very careful in studying all of these things, uh, we did not know about all of these connect connections. Yeah, yeah. And that is why, as I said, I'm a little bit uh, uh, lucky mm -hmm. to be able to be exposed to all of these three great Abrahamic religions. Mm -hmm. And uh, thus, the Quran becomes very important, uh, not only for Muslims, mm -hmm. Uh, but also for Jews and Christians. Mm -hmm. I would uh, like to see Christians read a whole lot of it, mm -hmm. Jews read a whole lot of it, since we Muslims are already mandated <laughs> to read both the Torah and the, and the Bible, because that is part and parcel of the teachings of the Quran, mm -hmm. to see the connections. Now, the Quran def uh, defines itself as a message to all of mankind. Though. That is quite correct. Mm -hmm. Matter mm -hmm. of fact, the story itself is really much more appreciated is the wonderful story of Hagar, mm -hmm. or Hajar in Arabic. Mm -hmm. This African woman who made the connection between all three Abrahamic faiths possible. <laughs> and Hagar, as you already know, was the servant to uh, Abraham's wife, Sarah. Mm -hmm. And she couldn't give, uh, be, uh, give, couldn't give birth to a child until Sarah, she was Sarah. really very old. Mm -hmm. And said, take Hagar, my servant, to bring you that uh, son that will carry on. Uh, the faith, and God did give both of them the covenant, both uh, Isaac's after Sarah gave birth at the age 48, mm -hmm. and uh, to Ishmael, saying that you will create a great nations. Mm -hmm. And the revelation for uh, Ishmael became Islam, or Muslims, mm -hmm. with the descendants of the Arabs, or the Prophet Muhammad and his people, and of course Isaac, uh, the way Jesus Christ descended. Mm -hmm. But then if you don't read uh, Genesis 1, 6, all the way to 24, you will not get that story. Mm. Then you go to the New Testament, the angel, mm. then it tells you that Abraham loved uh, Ishmael and Hagar so much mm. that he used to visit frequently mm. and build the first synagogue, which is where we go now for pilgrimage okay. in Mecca. That's the same building, that the same, same location. That is the same right? location. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. how do we know this? Because in 
the New Testament, Galatians, mm -hmm. we discover in Galatians the same story about the first synagogue. Now, now I, this is wonderful, and I, and I think the story that you're taking us down the, the path of Abraham does connect all the great traditions. That is but great. this document does yeah. the same. The Quran connects all the, right. the great traditions. Right. What the Quran does then with the Hagar story is tell us how Angel Gabriel came, tapped his wing because they were dying of thirst. Mm -hmm. That's where the Zamzam well is today. Mm -hmm. And people go to Mecca and they get the Zamzam water and it's still there to this day. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows the source. You cannot see it coming from a mountain as we know some water sources or some river or anything, but it's there for time immemorial. So good. that tells us the miracles that God uh, created. Alhamdulillah. What has happened mm -hmm. with the Holy Quran is that there have been three eras of uh, Jews and Christians not accepting it. Uh, the first era is what we call the polemic era. Mm -hmm. The polemic era is to completely disagree that the prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, is a prophet. Mm -hmm. uh, because he did not have his miracles like prophet Jesus, may peace be upon him. And uh, so uh, what is this imposter telling us mm -hmm. that is a prophet? Mm -hmm. And then we got the disguised polemic era. Mm -hmm. Okay, this guy was a wonderful hero. He did all his great things as a statesman as a religious leader and did wonderful things and his teachings are great. We have the Carlisles, we have even Giotto and all these uh, Western uh, thinkers of uh, their age saying all these great things, but we cannot accept him as a prophet mm -hmm. because, again, uh, and then we have the inevitable inconsistency, mm -hmm. where I begin to find uh, explanations like it must be epileptic for him to have these visions mm -hmm. and all that. But those of us who know a little bit of science know that no epileptic mm -hmm. will go through mm -hmm. a seizure and remember everything that mm -hmm. was before them, mm -hmm. nor uh, speak so coherently. Mm -hmm. So then the Quran uh, becomes uh, even more miraculous because this is. Uh, something that is revealed over 23 years mm -hmm. to a man who was completely illiterate, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. could not read and write, so you cannot say he had copied anything from the Torah or the Bible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a man that did not have teachers like the privileged did. He had no education. And for 23 years, his, uh, his, his followers <laughs> could have seen teachers coming in and out. Mm -hmm. So that one can even doubt that is a little bit strange. Mm -hmm. And then to even impugge uh, that uh, he must have done it, uh, what would have been the purpose? Mm -hmm. Was it so that he can be wealthy? No. I mean, up to when he ve even he became the prophet, became the leader, the man slept on a beer mat. Mm -hmm. The man did not even accept gifts that we are giving him. <laughs> they gave him gifts, he gave it right back to the poor. It's true, yeah. And he ate with his followers, sat on the floor, listened to the advice of his wives, mm -hmm. and uh, was married to a Jew, was married to a Christian Coptic, was married to a Muslim, and even revered their counsel <laughs> more than anybody else. Mm -hmm. Was married to the same woman who was older than him. She was 40, he was 25. Worked for him, he had no problem with his ego. So what uh, would this man had gained. Mm -hmm. Was it power? No, mm -hmm. because unlike the powerful in those days, they would have been building big mansions, right. parliaments and all that, but he lived in caves, he lived <laughs> as poor as anybody can imagine. Mm -hmm. So thus, uh, one cannot really deny that these are true revelations. Deny, deny his true mission. Um, I was curious, there are many people say that this is a work of a mortal human being. This is the work of Muhammad himself. Mm -hmm. And matter of fact, some people, even in Thomas Jefferson's Bible, says that the El Quran is of Muhammad. Mm -hmm. um, Muslims don't do not think of this book as being a, a source of a, a mo of a mortal, do, mm -hmm. do they? It's quite impossible for somebody who is so illiterate, mm -hmm. had no education, to have composed such a great uh, book, mm -hmm. and that it was revealed uh, was evident even when some of the revelations came right in the middle, sometimes of battle, sometimes sitting around with his fellows, his companions, and eating, and these revelations would come, and he would just recite. Mm -hmm. And then there were professional reciters who would just repeat what he's saying, and they would write them down as quickly as possible. And this is one of the reasons when you read the Quran, you don't see inconsistencies. Mm -hmm. Unlike the Bible, there are 13 places which I have identified of inconsistencies in terms of numbers, in terms of certain things that were revealed, mm -hmm. and also that the message is so singular 
yes. in all three uh, <laughs> behooves uh, human comprehension. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, this is an um, amazing document. This amazing document is composed of, uh, it's divided into uh, 112 different chapters, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. Now, it says that it's inspired by God. Why do you think that Jews and Christians um, do not embrace it? Is it because of the way Muslims have been trying to teach it for 1,400 years, or is it just, uh, just give me your view of it. And here is a person who says that I am, I am a messenger of God, and he was telling this to, to the people that he was meeting, uh, also Christians and Jews. Why is it there was so much difficulty in accepting him and, and, uh, and the clarity of the document? Well, the thing with religion is not so much the revelations. Mm -hmm. It is how we humans mm -hmm. have interpreted the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And to this day, there are Jews that have not accepted Jesus uh -huh. Christ's prophecy either, mm -hmm. that is a prophet. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Muhammad emerging from uh, the Quraysh tribe, the, the Muslim, an African origin is even going to have more difficulty in being accepted mm -hmm. as a prophet. Mm -hmm. And thus, it's, it's really nothing new in, in religious circles. Mm -hmm. But one then says, let's take the Torah, for example. Mm -hmm. If we look at some of the stories in the Torah, we know that they were not revealed with Abraham or with Moses mm -hmm. and others mm -hmm. before him. We can see, for example, the Ark, the Noah's Ark. Mm -hmm. That story can be found in Zoroastrian uh -huh. writings, which predates Judaism. Mm -hmm. We see certain things in the Old Testament that are in some Hindu writings. Mm -hmm. Did God give revelation to some of their prophets that uh, maybe over years, mm -hmm. people write these things down, interpret them, they have missed the message. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. the Quran does is respect the different interpretations from all of the prophets, mm -hmm. beginning with Prophet Adam, mm -hmm. all the way to the first messenger who is Noah. Mm -hmm. And so Muhammad is not even, this is one of the big mistakes they make, mm -hmm. that Muhammad is this founder of Islam uh -huh. or Muslims. Mm -hmm. He's not. Mm -hmm. It's just a continuation of what other prophets have said before him. Mm -hmm. Thus in the Quran you find the African uh, prophet uh, Luqman, mm -hmm. whose books are in the Holy Quran as part and parcel of the teachings which Muhammad also got in his revelations. Right. So therefore, um, uh, you will not find Luqman's uh, revelations in the Bible or the Torah either, mm -hmm. even though this, uh, this is also a prophet who God had given message to trans transmit. This is great. We do not get enough Muslim scholars uh, talking about this great revelation. I wish there were more opportunity for us to discuss Bilal and, and, and that historical construct. But I want to get into the, a little bit more detail of the Quran. The Quran identifies itself as, as a, a, um, a, a document that could not uh, be done unless it was revealed by God. Uh, it says that if it was not so, that the human mind would be able to pick it apart mm -hmm. and find many discrepancies. Right. Do you agree with this statement? And if, if so, if, if not, explain. Well, many have tried to do that, to mm -hmm. take the Quran, pick it apart, but then we get into this illogical inconsistency, mm -hmm. the slippery slope. And as I said, we've gone through those eras. Uh, one is that polemic, disguised polemic, and inevitable inconsistency. Mm -hmm. Within those, we see the accusation of conscious fabrication, mm -hmm. which could, not, could be quite impossible. Mm -hmm. We see the unconscious uh, fabrication hypothesis or theory. And of course, we see the epileptic theory. All of this fall by the wayside. Why? Mm -hmm. Because the message, the central message is have been consistent. Mm -hmm. There is one, but only one God who mm -hmm. created this universe and who is the supreme being. And uh, all three of the religions, even those that challenge uh, Islam, pretty much say the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the details may vary here and there, because, for example, the Quran does not personify God, whereas in the Torah and the Bible we see uh, places where God is supposed to be in the Garden of Eden, mm -hmm. and he was talking to Adam, and Adam was naked, say, I'm hiding from you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Quran says no, God does not have to be down here to get uh, to talk to Adam and to be seen, to be walking in the garden. And uh, so, uh, but the central message still remains the same. Therefore, it becomes very difficult uh, from any logical perspective to, to, to impugn what that which is revealed by God because the message, the central message, the common message itself is so consistent. Mm -hmm. And all of the prophets from Adam all the way to Muhammad, mm -hmm. pretty much live the same way, mm -hmm. humble, and we are, of course, uh, faced a lot of wrath from their people. And so these are not people who came with privilege and lived a good life as we, we call it, because mm -hmm. they are here to give a message. Mm -hmm. Thus, the, their persecution, mm -hmm. all of them, uh, were pretty much around the same line. Mm -hmm. Thus, uh, one can just logically conclude that this is really a revelation from the Almighty. So we're talking about a document that was actually revealed to the prophet over some 20 some odd years mm -hmm. in, in portions. And, uh, and, and it is quite amazing that over 20, 23, 28 years mm -hmm. that this, this document is consistent with itself. Right. So I greatly appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, I want to just ask you, and this is a little aside, mm -hmm. but, but it's supported by the Quran itself. What is the Quranic view of uh, repentance or salvation. Mm. Uh, perhaps you can explain it. And is there, is there a difference between the prevailing views of, of salvation? You know, we believe, I mean, there, there is the prevailing idea that there is uh, the prophets of God who actually die for the sins of humanity. Uh, but, uh, but tell me the Quranic position of this. Well, the Quran, uh, well, yeah, one has to make a distinction between salvation mm. and repentance. Yes. Yeah. Uh, for you to get salvation, you have to live in total unity with God, and that is what we call the idea of tohit. Mm -hmm. And the God don't need your prayer, your worship. We pray so that we can feel connected to God. God does not need us to pray to Him. Mm -hmm. He's God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, thus, for us to get salvation, not only do we follow the five pillars, worship, uh, give zakat mm -hmm. uh, to the needy, uh, go to Mecca for Hajj, mm -hmm. uh, 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 do, do Ramadan, mm -hmm. the fasting, and all of those great things. Mm -hmm. But that your whole life mm -hmm. have to live in worship. Mm -hmm. Smiling to somebody early in the morning when you see them, that's worship. Mm -hmm. uh, saying something nice to your neighbor, not holding grudges. If you're angry at somebody, let them know how you feel. Make peace. Make men's, help the needy, uh, go out uh, to those who are less fortunate. You may not be able to give them and just smile to them, make them feel good. That's all part and parcel of <laughs> worship. Faith. That is salvation. <laughs> Repentance then is when you have done wrong, is to admit that you have done the wrong mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, pray in worship <laughs> that you be forgiven mm -hmm. with the condition that you're not going to go back mm -hmm. to doing that wrong. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the great story in the Hadith of this terrible man who was in this sinful place, did all the bad things, and all of a sudden he got his dream telling him to get out of this place, go to the good side so he can repent, reform himself. And for some reason he paid heed to that dream. Mm. This is a murderer, a bum, pretty much. Mm. Somebody who looted, somebody who raped, did all these bad things. Mm -hmm. And on his way, on his journey, not even 20 minutes in his journey, he, he died. Mm. And so the angels were coming to measure the distance from where he left to the good side to see if he would be saved. Before the angels could get there, Allah, God, uh, pushed the area so close to him <laughs> that when the angels measured, God said, no, 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 you're not going to get this one. Mm -hmm. So again, mm -hmm. this is an allegory. It's a story to tell us that God is so oft forgiven mm -hmm. that he knows uh, what is in our heart. He knows what we even think. He even knows what we don't think. Mm -hmm. That uh, if we really believe sincerely that what we've done is wrong mm -hmm. and uh, repent and never and vow never to go back to it, he will forgive us. Beautiful. Listen, we have three minutes left in our program. Uh, I want to talk to you just a little bit as we started the program at the top of the program, we talked about religious freedom. Right. Is this document in your view, and you've read it I'm sure as I have from cover to cover, I'm sure from many, many, many years of studying it, uh, the, the Quran, is the Quran in support of, the, uh, of religious freedom? I want to find out, just, uh, uh, just, a, just a clear question. Is the Quran a document that supports religious freedom? Well, definitely, because again, the whole idea of the Quran is 
uh, over and over again, God tells us mm -hmm. that man is his greatest creation, who he gave free will. Mm -hmm. Unlike the angels who are just there to serve, mm -hmm. they have no free will. Mm -hmm. And the angels, obviously, we humans think are more powerful than us, but God said, no, you have free will. And therefore, it gives us the choice to believe or not to believe. So the idea of Hak al Tamaluk, mm -hmm. Hak al Uriah, Hak al Im, and all the other two Haks, mm -hmm. pretty much are what the first preamble of the United States <laughs> Constitution are <laughs> life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Uh. So that uh, when we Muslims say that uh, America is Islamic, we're not saying it just to feel good. Mm -hmm. We're saying that all of this, we are already revealed. Uh, thousands of years before we even think about all of these constitutional developments. And when we talk about the first constitution, we're talking about the, the Adl, the first constitution of Medina. Mm -hmm. So the idea of uh, constitution is nothing new to Islam. And then when we talk about, uh, is it uh, an epidemic of freedom? I say yes. If it wasn't, people like General Charles Buchanan the nephew of former U.S. President James Buchanan could not have become Muslim. Mm -hmm. A mathematician like Jeffrey Lang, Kansas, Kansas State University, mm -hmm. uh, winner of a Nobel Prize mathematics, could not have become a Muslim. Joseph Estes, a great a Christian minister in Texas, mm -hmm. who became a Muslim. Heather Ramaha, Yvonne Ridley, we can go on and on and on. <laughs> Why? Because they saw freedom yes. in this uh, great work. Mm -hmm. And what is even more revealing in oh, the Quran. We, we will have to mm -hmm. put it there. This is yeah. at the end of our program. It's amazing how fast this goes. Thank you, Dr. McGorry, for an excellent scholar's chair. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Go out and, and read the Quran. If you want to know more about the scholar's chair, go to www.scholarschair.com. Or if you want to know more about Islam, go to 301-567-3359. Thank you, and good night.